round of applause really quickly. Who has no idea who I am? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, catch them up really quickly. I am not drunk, but check on me in an hour. If I'm walking straight, then you'll know I'm wasted. Because, <laughs> like, here's the thing. I'm not drunk, but the doctor who delivered me was, so I have CP, which means I shake all the time. So I shake it, shake it, shake it like Taylor Swift. But she just wants to shake, 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 and mine is totally involuntary. <laughs> but, like, let's be honest. I'm not Taylor Swift. I'm the lost Kardashian. <laughs> They moved me away because I couldn't keep my legs open. Um, so, um, so there, like, I see some of you guys look at you like, aww, poor disabled chick. Let's make a video about her go viral. Someone feed her a French fry. But, um, but I just want to tell you, like, I wasn't one of those girls because I. There are perks to being palsy. Right? So there's the obvious one, which is handicap parking, which I love because I'm one of those people that runs into the mall if it's raining, and then people like start chasing me down, like, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I'm like, I've suffered my entire life. Give me my parking space. I don't care that you're in a wheelchair. I'm the Oh, you have no arms? Look what I can do with my arms. <laughs> I have a lot to tell you guys, so let's just like spit this out really quickly. Here's the way it goes. Single people, married people are just trying to trick you into their house. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. They are so miserable that they even convince the LGBT community that they want in marriage because they want them to suffer too, okay? Marriage is a life sentence and you gotta choose that cellmate wise. I got married at the age of 33 on Halloween. I'm about to celebrate my sixth anniversary. Yeah. It's really funny because when I got engaged, usually people say congratulations. Everyone said to me, really? <laughs> so anyway, when I got married, I was a virgin by choice and that was my father's choice. And, um, my dad was really, really serious about this. So like when I was growing up, my dad, he was protective like in a different way than other parents. I wasn't allowed to ride a seesaw or like a carousel horse or a pogo stick. Not because he thought I was gonna like fall and crack my head open, but because he was afraid I'd accidentally lose my virginity. <laughs> and he used to take me on educational trips he would put me and my sisters in a car and he would drive us down to the Bowery and he'd roll up to a sex worker and he'd look at her and look at me and look at her and look at me and go, you see daddy? You see what will happen if you use a Tampax? <laughs> so, the reason I got married at 33 was not because I was afraid I would die alone and be eaten by my cat, but I had been a bridesmaid 17 times and I wanted to make my money back. growing up, I had no freaking idea. So I would go out with my friends and they always took care of me but I didn't know it. So like, I can't stand, which is why I'm sitting on the stool. And uh, I would go to bars and they would grab women by the back of their heads and just smash them on the bar so that I could sit. <laughs> and then like, they would get in fights and stuff and I would get in there and be like, hold me back, I'm back to And like, no one ever hit me and I thought it was because I was tough, and now I know it's because they didn't want to hit the disabled chick. So I had to get married, right? I couldn't do what my parents did because I love my parents' story. It's so romantic. It's total destiny. They're first cousins. And uh, I couldn't do that when I went to get married because I am way too disabled to marry my cousin, okay? Right? And then I couldn't do Match.com because typing was not my thing. So I went to Gaza and I caught a husband because they got no place to run. So, so I come back to America. And I'm all excited, right? Because I'm going to make my money back. And my friends are throwing me a bridal shower. I'm all excited. I walk in. Instead of throwing me a bridal shower, they threw an intervention. And they're like, May soon. The decisions you are making are affecting both you and us. And we are here to tell you that you are a free American woman and you do not have to have an arranged marriage. 
And I was like, guys, I arranged it. <laughs> and so I brought him home, I immediately had buyer's remorse. And then like five years later, so like, I'm just like everyone else, I thought that he would run away when he got his green card. And he did, and I was like, you're free. <laughs> and then, it was so funny, I brought him to America and I was like, you're free now, what's your dream? And he goes, my dream? is to work in a supermarket. And I go, nah, yeah, that's not your dream. <laughs> so he ended up becoming the falafel king of New Jersey. So he's a refugee and a chef. So I call him chef UG. And, and we have the greatest marriage because I'm really good at solving arguments. Like I'm really good at just making it all go away and making things good again. I just look at him and I go, do you want to go back to the refugee camp? <laughs> Cause there's no Pikachu go in the refugee camp. <laughs> Pikachu got shot in the face. <laughs> Sorry. It's good stuff. Um, so, so um, I, I feel, I, I do, I feel very bad. I'm just gonna be serious for a second because things in America are totally fucked up right now. And I feel so bad for Chef Eugene. He's been in America. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I feel so bad for him because he's been in America for seven years and the United States government will not let his mother visit because they claim she's on the terror watch list because I put her there. <laughs> me if I'm pregnant all the time. I'm telling you guys in the audience, do not ask anyone you don't know or who's not crowning if they're pregnant. Because I was out the other day and this woman puts her hand on my stomach and she goes, oh my god, when are you due? You look like you're about to pop. And I'm like, I am about to pop. I'm about to pop you in the face, you bitch. Which brings me to my final statement. Please do not use the word bitch. It's misogynistic and it's violent, and I am gonna give you a better word to use. The word is popple. By round of applause, who knows what popple is? It's spelled P-O-P-P-L-E, and it is the perfect replacement for the B word. Watch. You go up to someone and you go, why are you being such a popple? And they're like, I don't know, I'm just gonna Google it. <laughs> for those of you who don't know what a popple is, it's a stuffed animal with the ability to stuff its head in its ass and become bald. <laughs> so it's the perfect replacement word, right? Because you look at people and you're like, popple, please. Or my favorite one was just bow down, popple, bow down, popple. And what you're saying is stick your head in your ass 